can go to heaven and finally be with Jesus. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but the, you, you're supposed to be doing something while you're here. But man, how, how can you always talk about money and people are going to hell? So if I stop talking about money, fewer people are going to hell. I'm confused. Like, what does one thing have to do with the other? That's like me saying, wow, how could you sleep at night? People are going to hell. Because you're sleepy. Jesus, who is salvation, when he came preaching the gospel, did not preach the gospel of salvation. He preached the gospel of the kingdom. Go read it in your Bible. I'm going to pose a question, okay? And I, I want you to really think about the answer to this question. What is the kingdom of God? Now, why do I ask that question? Because it's clearly stating I'm supposed to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to me. So here's the question. What is the kingdom of God? If I don't know the answer to that question, everything I do after that is a waste of time. Why? I'm seeking for the kingdom of God. I don't know what it looks like. So I find it. I don't know I found it. So I keep looking for it. And I keep looking for it and I keep looking for it. Then I find it again and I don't know what it looks like. So I keep looking for it again. I have to start at the beginning. And if I don't know what the kingdom of God is, looking for it does me no good. Now, I know that's bold. It's a bold statement. I submit to you that most people have no earthly idea or heavenly idea for that matter, what the kingdom of God is. And it's certainly not existing for 60 or 70 or 80 or 90 years on earth and waiting to die and go to heaven. That is not the kingdom of God. That's a half truth. I mean, sitting around waiting to go to heaven for 60 years may land you in hell. Okay, if you never fast, you never pray, you never have a relationship with God. Okay, so let's put things in its proper context. But somehow this guy's just trying to twist things to make scripture fit his profit agenda. Okay. His agenda for a profit. Okay. For prosperity. Okay. It's just another twisted repackaged version of the prosperity gospel that he's teaching. Okay. Romans chapter eight, verse 23 says we who have the first fruits of the spirit grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Okay. So we anticipate the, the, the putting off the corruption and putting on incorruption to get that new heavenly body. Okay. So it's nothing wrong with that. I I I anticipating okay and you kind of contradicting yourself because you preach the anti-works salvation that you can't lose your salvation okay you see this hypocrite this heretic okay he believes in once saved always saved so that's a contradiction okay also matthew chapter 9 verse 37 and 38 says the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few. Pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Okay. Matthew chapter 22 verse 2 speaks about a parable of the king arranging a wedding for his son. And he sent out servants. Okay. These servants are the few laborers that were mentioned in Matthew chapter 9. And these servants are sent out to call those who were invited. Okay, that's the short version. Matthew eleven twelve, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take by force. Okay, it's talking about spiritual warfare. The kingdom of God is casting out devils. Okay, as it states in Luke chapter 11, verse 20, if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt, the kingdom of God is come upon you. Okay? So you can spend scriptures for profit. You, you can't. You can't spend the, the scriptures for profit. Okay? Like this heretic is attempting to do. So then we get down to the end of Matthew chapter 6. And he's saying, don't worry about 
things like this. Don't, what are you worried about what you're going to eat for? Why are you worried about what you're going to drink? Why are you worried about what you're going to put on? Like, don't, and, and I want you to notice something in this too, but, but, I mean, since I'm bringing things to your attention. Notice it didn't say anything about don't worry about a place to live. See, everybody wants to act like, it's, it's so amazing. People want to people be like, they, they, we, we love pseudo-spirituality that makes us feel like we're more spiritual than somebody else, right? And so people say, well, I don't know why you're always talking about money. The Bible says having therewith food and raiment, therewith be content. Okay, so you get food and raiment. House wasn't named in that. Do you have a house? Why are you talking to me? Right, what's the difference? Right, what's the difference? The Bible says food, water, and raiment. Those are necessities. A house is a luxury. Now, I know that sounds, that sounds crazy in a Western society, but do you understand, that if you read through the Bible, thousands of years went by, thousands of years went by, before a house is ever mentioned. Who's the first person the Bible tells us had a house? You ever think about that? First person the Bible tells us had a house was Lot. Abraham didn't have a house, he had tents. I'm, 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 not saying we don't need, I'm not saying you shouldn't live in a house. I'm saying we think a lot of stuff is necessary that are luxuries. And we judge people who have more luxuries than we have, and we think all they care about is stuff. But we got luxuries other people don't have, but we don't think all we care about is stuff. Maybe that's why it tells us in the book of Romans, why dost thou judge thy brother? Why dost thou set it not thy brother? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, God is able to make him stand. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to save Yeshua's job for Yeshua, and I'm going to let him judge y'all, and I'm going to leave y'all alone. Do you, like, I'm going to leave you alone. You can leave me alone or not. That's between you and the judge. But I ain't going to try to take the judge's place, because eventually, here come the judge. <laughs> Again, this guy is a hireling. The scriptures do say, go sell everything you own and give it to the poor. Okay, and those who forsake land and houses... They shall inherit eternal life. Those who forsake land and houses for his sake. Okay, this is the kingdom of God. The, script, the scriptures say, cry aloud and spare not. So if you don't warn those whose riches are corrupted, and you yourself stop seeking what the Gentiles seek, then the judge will cast you into a Christless hell. Okay, he said, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my father who's in heaven. Okay, you can't twist these scriptures. Okay, are you suggesting that the apostle James was wrong for saying your riches are corrupted? Okay, is Jeremiah wrong? When, when in Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 13, is he wrong for judging the rich? Okay, them white slave masters and their descendants? Okay, when Jeremiah said, woe to him who uses his neighbor's services without paying him wages. Okay, see, this guy here is just thinking in the context or the, from the perspective of his own life and his own wealth that he's accumulated. He's not thinking about the root of where that wealth comes from. You see what I'm saying? Because if you look at it from that perspective, then you'll think that Habakkuk, Jeremiah, Isaiah, uh, even Job, and of course Christ, all these, all these men of God who spoke against the rich, you would just think, uh, James, you would just think that they're speaking vaguely. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Look at Habakkuk. What about Habakkuk? Look at Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 12. When he said, woe to him that build it a town with blood and establish it in iniquity. Okay, he establishes a city in iniquity. Okay, this guy, Myron Golden, look, dude, you're just a product of the matrix. And you you the reason why the Most High Yah warned us to not go into the way of the Gentiles. Okay, 70 years ago, you would have been working 12-hour shifts at the steel factory, okay? <laughs> but because Mystery Babylon, America, which is confusion, because Mystery Babylon was built on innocent bloodshed, now you can see how Satan can further use men like Myron Golden, okay, who under the Willie Lynch uh, system, they may have been crying out to the Most High Yah. 
to deliver them. You see, but riches can change that. Riches can change a man's relationship with God. That's why Christ told the rich young ruler to just go sell everything you own, dude. Okay? This changes the whole relationship with God. Okay? Instead, now he's going to go preach another Jesus and die and go to hell if he don't repent. You see what I'm saying? Ah, can I get a witness? Where are my people? Right? And so, so what we have to understand is this passage says something, and it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added unto you. All what things? All of the things you're worried about. No. The bigger question is what does seeking first the kingdom of God look like, dude? In Acts chapter 3, the lame man came at the gates anticipating Peter and John to give him some money. And Peter told him, silver and gold I do not have with me. This is a man of God, a true man of God, an apostle. Silver and gold I do not have with me. But what I do have is Jesus Christ. Now rise up and walk. See, that's the kingdom of God. He healed that man. Instead of giving that man money, he was able to use the power of God to heal that man. And what happened? In Acts chapter 4, all who were possessors of lands or houses, they sold them and brought the proceeds at the apostles' feet. Okay, so there was a market for righteousness. <laughs> I'm going to have to talk about this in another video. There was a market for righteousness. Right, right after the apostles, they, they, they sold all of their possessions and brought the proceeds at their feet. What happened? Like a chapter or two later, then the apostles was thrown in prison because the government, okay, the world system found out that they were using the power of God to deliver people. You see? So, out of, out of one hand, they're getting blessed by God, but then they're being persecuted again. We don't see that happening with false prophets. They're having people come and lay things at their feet, lay money at their feet, and they're preaching a false prosperity gospel. And they're not suffering anything for the kingdom of God's sake. So they're climbing up another way. You see, they're thieves and robbers, as the scriptures talk about. With... Now I'm seeking the kingdom of God. It's not some ethereal, distant, hopeful, waiting for heaven so I can go to heaven and finally be with Jesus. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but the, you, you're supposed to be doing something while you're him. He gave us something to do. Oh, hey, you know what's really interesting? But, Myron, you should just preach the gospel of salvation. Okay, now, let me help you all something. And, and, there, and there are people who say, but Myron, how, how can you always talk about money and people are going to hell? So if I stop talking about money, fewer people are going to hell. I'm confused. Like, what does one thing have to do with the other? That's like me saying, Why, how could you sleep at night? People are going to hell. Because you're sleepy. <laughs> if you wake up, they... Okay. Jesus, who is salvation. In fact, the name Yeshua means salvation. When Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, he literally said, stand and still and see the Yeshua of the Lord. So, Jesus, who is salvation, when he came and he preached the gospel, I'm, I'm, like, a lot of people ain't going to like what I'm about to say, but that's okay, I ain't running for office, and so here it is. Jesus, who is salvation, when he came preaching the gospel, did not preach the gospel of salvation. He preached the gospel of the kingdom. Go read it in your Bible. And this is the biggest lie this heretic is told today. He only preaches to people who don't read their Bible. And I can clearly see that. Christ talked more about hell than anything else. And when he talked about the kingdom of God, most of the time, he was teaching the disciples how to have faith, how to fast and deny themselves, how to maintain discipline through the eye gates, okay, and how to, how to, how to master their tongue so that Satan does not have an advantage over you, okay? But again, this heretic 
he only twists scriptures to serve his own belly. And there's a penalty to pay for that in all eternity. Okay, this is what you can expect from a hireling. Okay, he pretty much sold his soul. The apostles were not hirelings. The saints sold land and houses for them because the kingdom of God, again, was casting out demons and preaching about hell. Okay, but anyway, that's all I have. Don't let your flesh write checks that your soul cannot cash in the afterlife. It's all about fates and gates. You got to have faith and you're going to need God's grace.